We're going to demonstrate the finishing of a metal aircraft part. Today what we're going to do is we're going to prepare, etch, and prime a used aircraft wing. This particular wing happens to be a Cessna 150 and we're, we're demonstrating using the Stewart Systems products. We have the products laid out that we're going to use today on the table and it's very simple. Now this wing prior to the way that you see it now was stripped using the Stewart System Eco Strip. This is a water-based product that you put on with a brush. You let it uh, stay on the aluminum for approximately a day or, or so you can go a day and a half with it. And at that time any uh, paint that has not peeled up and is ready to easily scrape off, you can remove it using a hot water pressure washer. And so once that's done, this is what we have. This wing is totally stripped and it's ready now for the cleaning and the etching, the priming, and then the painting. So what we're going to do first, we're going to thoroughly clean it using the, the heavy duty cleaner and that's diluted with water about uh, approximately 10 parts of water and one part of the heavy duty cleaner. While that wing is still wet and the parts that are still wet, then we're going to spray our um, E625 aluminum etch on it. We're going to do about a 36 inch square part at a time. We'll rinse it with a towel and a bucket of water, then we'll move on to the second section until we have the entire wing panel etched. At that time we're going to roll it outside. We're going to, we're going to hand rinse each part as we go with a bucket and, and a towel to get it uh, pretty well rinsed off. But prior to priming, we're going to pressure wash it with a cold uh, water pressure washer to make sure that all the etch is completely away from any seams or parts around the rivets. And since there's so very little etch left, we're not going to do anything that will harm the, harm the environment. So, we'll get started in just a couple minutes. The first step is that we need to clean it with our E670 heavy duty cleaner. And so, the only thing we need for that is a, is a spray bottle with it pre-mixed, 10 parts of water, one part of cleaner. We've got a clean bucket and a, a rag. This is a, a terry towel. It's new. It's never been used. It's approximately 18 inches square. Whenever we do a, a cleaning or working on an aircraft part, we always like to have new uh, clean rags that have never been used before. That way we don't we have a chance of not contaminating uh, any part that's going to be under the paint job. What we're going to do is we're going to just lightly spray our heavy duty cleaner onto the aluminum. And what we're going to do is just scrub it, just like washing a car or anything else. And then we're going to just leave it wet and then we're going to come back and put the aluminum etch right on top of the cleaner. What this is going to do is remove any uh, dirt or grease or anything that happens to be on there that you that you've missed in the prior part of the cleanup. You can see it's got quite a bit on it. Keep rotating your rag and then as it gets to a certain point then we'll come back and we'll rinse it out and clean it and keep it clean. We want to get this aluminum as clean as we can prior to putting the etch on it. Okay, we'll go give our rag a rinse. A little bit of the cleaner goes a long ways. You don't have to have it so wet that it runs off. You just need to just get it damp on there and then with the damp cloth that's, that cleans it really well.
Okay, that's the bottom side. We'll turn it over now and do the top side. Okay, we've already done the bottom side of the wing and we're getting ready now to clean the top side with the heavy duty cleaner. As soon as we're finished putting the heavy duty <coughs> cleaner on, we're going to come back with a clean rag and fresh rinse water. And we're going to go over the entire wing top and bottom with, with clean, fresh rinse water to get all of the last residue of the cleaner off. And then while it's still damp and wet, we're going to go directly into the etching. We've got the wing all cleaned with a heavy duty cleaner, and now we want to go over it with a clean bucket of water and a new clean rinse rag. We're going to completely rinse it, and then we're going to start the etch. You can rinse the, the uh, rag out pretty well, as thoroughly as you can. It doesn't have to be real wet. Okay, we finished using the EcoClean. The next step now is that we have to etch. What we're going to do is put the, the aluminum etch, and since this is a used wing, we have diluted this one to one. Now, if it were a new uh, aluminum wing, new metal, then we would have diluted it two parts of water to one part of the etch. So this is mixed one to one, one part of water, one part of etch. We're going to do a three foot or 36 inch square area, 36 by 36. We're gonna use a red scotch bright. We're gonna take the, the uh, shine off of the aluminum, give it a good tooth for the primer to stick to. We're going to use a dust particulate mask. Uh, some people find that the uh, etch is a little, uh, it's a little hard on the throat if you breathe it, so the type of mask just keeps you from breathing the vapors in. And I'm going to use the nitrile gloves to keep it off of my fingers. You've got a little cut, it'll sting a little bit. It's, it, uh, it's never hurt my skin, but anyway, I've usually got a little cut here and there, so I'm gonna use the uh, nitrile gloves. So we'll get started. Okay, we're gonna start. Be sure whenever you start a segment, look at your watch because you need to leave the etch on the aluminum at least three minutes. And three to four minutes is fine. Whatever you do, do not let the etch dry on the aluminum. That's the main thing. Keep it wet. And so you wanna rinse it before it dries out. Okay, that's, that area is big enough at a time. That's all I want to do because I want to be sure that we don't let it dry. So we're going to keep an eye on it. It takes a minute or two to rough it up and then we only have to let it set for another minute or so. So I'm keeping track of the time here. 
Doesn't hurt to dampen it a little bit if you have to. You can put a little bit more on there. It doesn't take much. Doesn't have to drip off. Just keep it damp. Okay, it's been about four minutes. We're going to go ahead and rinse it now. We use a nice clean uh, water and a new towel. And so we're going to do about three feet. We're going to uh, rinse it by hand. That'll get the initial rinse before we use a pressure washer. Okay, we'll go right on to the next section. The main thing on this scotch brite is just to get all of the shine off of the aluminum and get it down to where it's nice and dull and it's got the smooth, even texture all the way around for that primer to stick to. Okay, we'll let that sit for just about a minute. If you'd like, when you're doing an area like this, if you find that the, that the uh, 36 inch square is maybe not quite large enough for you to feel comfortable, you can do a little bit more than that, but just the main thing is to do whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of people, um, 36 inches square is just right. On this particular wing, it's working out pretty close. So just kind of be your own judge. Just do not let it dry out as you're etching. Okay, we've got the first couple bays uh, done, and I want to show you the difference between where it's been etched and where it's not etched. The part you're looking at now has not been etched, and we'll swing around here and let you look at the difference. You can really see, all right, there is a good job of etching. It's nice and clean, and it's ready now. As soon as we get it all done, we'll take it out, pressure wash it, and as soon as it's dry, we're ready to prime it. Okay, that's got the wing etched, and so we're going to take it outside, pressure wash it off, we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to prime it. Okay, here we go. 
pressure washing is a very important step of the final cleaning process on this wing. What it does is allows us to really get between the seams, around the rivets, and all the little nooks and crannies and get all of that acid etch off of that aluminum. Also what it does, it does a real good job of getting that uh, etch and uh, residue from the Scotch-Brite pad uh, cleaned off of that aluminum. You can see that coming off in this shot. So this is a very important part and so you want to be very thorough in the rinsing of that because uh, the, the better that you do now on this wing, the better that primer is going to stick when we get it inside and start the pr uh, priming process. You, usually you need to go over the uh, panel a couple times. The first time I'll get it uh, uh, starting everything to break loose and gets underneath those seams really well. And then the second time when you go over it, it really rinses that off. So it doesn't hurt to go over it two or three times. If you don't have access to a pressure washer, a cold pressure washer, you can use a garden hose and a nozzle and use a real uh, strong stream. Uh, a pretty harsh spray on it will do uh, almost as well. A pressure washer is really the best tool here for this. I'm going to turn the wing over. We'll do the other side. And then we'll get it inside and uh, go from there. Okay, that's got it's rinsed and it's ready to take inside, dry it out, and the next step will be the priming. Yesterday afternoon, we finished doing the etching and the cleaning on the wing panel, and we let it set overnight so now it's nice and dry. So this morning, what we're going to do is get the primer on it. Uh, before we get started out there, we're going to talk a minute inside here about the uh, things that you're going to need prior to start on the uh, priming. Of course, the first thing you're going to need is a spray gun. And on this particular spray gun is a DeVilvis Finish Line 3 with a 1.3 millimeter nozzle in it. We've got our uh, uh, 7520 Smoke Gray Eco Prime. We're going to put the smoke gray because this airplane is going to be painted in Signia White and the smoke gray will give us a little bit of a contrast between the primer and the top coat so it's easy to see the first coat go on. We've got our uh, mixing paddles, we've got our paint filters to where we're going to do the final uh, straining into the spray gun. We've got our mixing container, and this is large enough to do the initial uh, um, batches at a time that we're going to spray. We've got our uh, dual cartridge organic vapor respirator. We want to be sure that anytime we're spraying anything in any of our products of the Stewart Systems, this uh, organic respirator works quite well on without using a fresh air supplied system. And that's provided that you have plenty of ventilation through your exhaust fan, which we have here. And then we have a scale that we'll use more when we get into the two part poly. We won't necessarily need that on the primer. So we're going to take a few minutes to get everything ready, then we're going to come back, we're going to start mixing the paint, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now before we uh, start putting the primer on, we need to give this uh, wing a final uh, wiping off and blowing it. It's nice and dry from uh, spending the night in the spray room, so uh, if a little bit of dust or anything has gotten on it, we're going to go ahead and clean that off, then we're going to go back in the spray, uh, mixing room mix our paint and come back and start putting the primer on it. So let's, uh, let's we're going we're gonna to blow it and wipe it off right now. This towel that we're using is the same towel that we're using putting the, the cleaner in the eps, this 18 inch 
uh, terry towel. It's new, never been used, so it's not contaminated. And this is the only thing that we're going to wipe this wing down with prior to putting the primer on it. Okay, that's got the wing blown off. Let's go inside the mixing room and mix the primer and let's uh, start spraying. We're ready to start mixing the paint now. And on this wing, we're going to mix uh, 50 ounces of the primer and we're going to mix 5 ounces of distilled water. That's a 10 to 1 ratio. And you need to give it a, a little bit of distilled water to make sure that it goes on nice and smooth. And if it, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit when we start spraying. When you first start spraying, if the primer doesn't go on as smooth as what you think it should, then it's time to do one or two things. Either change the viscosity of the primer or change the air pressure of your gun. This primer should go on very smooth so it's real easy to sand once it's put on. We're going to go ahead and first thing, you always want to stir your paint prior to uh, pouring it out of the container. And so normally it doesn't take a great deal of, of, of stirring, but you do need to, uh, to uh, be sure that anything that's settled to the bottom is in nice suspension. We'll just take a few seconds here and stir it up. So that's nice and uh, smooth there, so that'll be fine. This is a graduated container, so it's real easy for me to see when I've got 50 ounces. Okay. 
one nice thing about this is that whenever you get through you can put it back in the container because it's water cleanup and the only thing that it would do is be to dilute you down a little bit so you need to pay attention if you keep putting it back in there that you might get thinner and thinner that's where if you wanted to you could use a viscosity cup and it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 28 seconds is what we're looking for and use a second container to where we can get the five ounces of distilled water we'll have to kind of guess at it we got it just a little bit above the four ounces so that should be just right Okay. Get our respirator out. We'll take our spray gun. We're going to open the fan all the way open because we're spraying a large area. We want the fan completely open. We're going to turn the uh, fluid control completely off. And on this spray gun, we put some index marks here on the back with a felt marker so you can see them. This particular gun comes without reference lines. And so we're going to go ahead and put the primer in it. Then we'll go out and turn the air on and we'll set our uh, air with the trigger pulled to 22 pounds. And if it's not quite as smooth as we want when we're spraying, then we're going to bump that up a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the primer in it. I usually don't paint, uh, usually don't fill the hopper completely full because it is very heavy. It's about uh, two thirds full there and that works quite well. And only use a filter one time. Once you strain it, go ahead and discard it because the, the paint will. Uh, seal it over and the next time you use it the paint won't flow through it. Okay let's go out and set the spray gun and we'll be ready to start spraying. Okay we're in the spray room we're getting ready to spray we've got the primer and the spray gun we're going to hook up the air to it and we're going to pull the, the trigger we've got the fan wide open our fluid control is off the two stage trigger we're going to pull the first stage and we're going to set the air to 22 pounds. There's 20 Okay, there's our 22 pounds, and then we're going to open the fluid control approximately one and a half turns, and we're going to see how that works from there. We may have to stop and make an adjustment. We're going to start on the bottom of the wing. We're going to do the edges first. We're going to stand it up, put the first coat on in the vertical. We're going to roll it back over, do the edges again, and then do the top part, and then we're going to immediately go right back and give it the, the second coat, which we're going to give this wing one cross coat of primer. That's all it needs. So we're going to turn on the exhaust fan and we'll get started.
okay, I just refilled the spray gun. We came back out and turned the wing back over where we started from. And we're gonna wait a few more minutes. Normally, if the temperature is warm, it will be ready to put the second coat on right away. It's fairly cool in here. We're probably 65 degrees. And you can see a little bit of shine left in the primer. And as long as there's a little shine and it's not dulled out yet, it's not ready for the second coat. You need to wait until it completely dulls out and then we'll start the second coat. So we're gonna give it a few minutes yet. Okay, we've let this wing set a few minutes longer now and it's dulled off real nice all the way around. So we're gonna go ahead and put the second coat on. We're gonna go around the edges just like we did the first time. Then when we rotate the wing up, we're gonna rotate the nozzle 90 degrees because this is gonna be the, the uh, second coat of the cross coat. So we're gonna put this coat on 90 degrees to the way that we put the first one on. So this time, the spray gun will be going vertically instead of horizontal.
Okay, that's got the wing primed. We're gonna let that sit. We'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll scotch bright it off, we'll blow it off, and we'll put the insignia white on it. When you're through spraying, take what's left in the spray gun and just put it back in the paint container because it's it's a one part material so you don't have any that, uh, that you're going to waste. So we'll just pour it right back in there. And we'll open the fluid control valve almost all the way out and pull the trigger and that'll let the paint that's up in this uh, ca uh, cavity drain back out and you don't have to waste the paint. And then for cleanup you can use a bucket with some water in it or in this case we have a sink it makes it real nice because it, it just cleans right up with water. So let's go to the sink. We'll use uh, kind of lukewarm water. It doesn't have to be cold or hot. It doesn't matter. I like it about lukewarm. And then with the water running, I just pull the, pull the trigger and let it flush through. And just unscrew it as I go. a little scotch bright pad there's a little bit of a uh, build up right inside that kind of dries a little bit from the air it'll just clean right out and there's the hopper that's all nice and clean then on the gun itself I like to pull the cap off make sure that the paint down inside of the, the cap is all nice and cleaned off the needle port then use a wrench, pull the trigger, use a, a wrench and un, uh, unscrew the nozzle. And flush that out and then flush the part through. And that little bit of, uh, uh, of a lot of water going through really floods that needle and just cleans it right up. And as you can see, there it is. It's all nice and clean. We've got a little bit right there yet. A little brush that we use, it's a little wire brush, will go down inside if there's a, a chance that there's a little buildup in there. Just take a little brush and just wipe that out. And that's, and that's it. This gun's clean and ready for the next time. We primed the wing and it's nice and dry now. And it's set for 24 hours so the primer is nice and cured out and we're going to be able to sand it. Now that on this particular wing, we gave it a cross coat of the, uh, of the um, primer sealer of the smoke gray. And we're gonna talk about two things that you can do when you primer. We showed the, the uh, one cross coat or the two coats, but at the same time, we wanna uh, point out that on some certain cases, you can give a wing just a single coat. This wing has a lot of rivets and things that as you're sanding that you could sand down through and expose the aluminum. And if that happens, you need to be certain that you go back and you re-prime that area. You do not want any bare spots because they'll show through on your finish. The first coat that we put on this wing yesterday was very smooth and we could have gotten by with that. And we decided to go ahead and do the second coat based upon the amount of rivets that are on here. So that's kind of a judgment that I wanted to explain that you can do it either way. Now on this wing, we're going to show two methods of preparing it for the top coat. We're going to use sandpaper and we're going to use Scotch-Brite. If you, if you uh, apply the primer sealer and it comes out with a little bit of roughness to it, you're going to have to sand. Uh, in this case, the primer went on very smooth. There's, uh, uh, there's no orange peel in it and so a Scotch-Brite uh, works very well on that. So I want to explain, uh, first of all, the sandpaper. And this is a 3M, it's a 320 grit open coat and that's very important that it's an open coat type sandpaper and it will clearly stay right on the back that it's an open coat. And what that means is the way that the, uh, the grit is bonded to the paper and this particular paper will not plug up with our uh, primer. If you use a closed coat type or a wet or dry, it will plug the paper and you will not like how it sands. The other thing that we're going to use is a, this is the maroon scotch bright that works very well. And so we cut this into four pieces. 
and so that works that works really nice so we're going to start out with the uh, sandpaper and then we're going to go on to the scotch bright there's one other thing that's very important on this on this wing or any of your other parts on your aircraft that once it's primered you need to be very careful on how you handle this we don't want to touch it with bare hands uh, for sure as after you eat a meal or whatever wash your hands because if you do touch it oils on your skin can cause a problem down the road um, what we're going to do is wear the nitro gloves and it does two things it keeps the sandpaper off some people have sensitive skin but the nitro gloves will keep you from touching that finish and as soon as this is uh, uh, sanded we're going to blow it off we're going to put it in the spray room and then we're going to we're going to go ahead and uh, in just a little bit we're going to be putting the insignia white top coat on this wing so right now we're going to demonstrate how we're going to sand it we're going to start out using the 320 open coat sandpaper and we're just going to do a small area just to give give you an idea of uh, what to do and what not to do while you're sanding the main thing is to stay uh, away from the head of the rivets. The sandpaper will go right through the primer and instantly expose those rivets. So what we're going to do is start, and we're going to sand in between the rivets and not even go over the top of them at all. This primer is very smooth and it's taking very little to uh, uh, sand this. The main thing is that we want to be certain that there's no little specks of dust or anything on it. That's the main thing. And also, the uh, little bit of sanding gives the top coat really a good tooth to grip to when we put it down. And priming primer needs to be sanded regardless. It's a, a practice that we have uh, always taught and we believe that it's a good paint job always is pre-sanded prior to putting the top coat. Okay, there's, there's the way that we sand. As you can see, the, the primer does not plug the sandpaper. It, leaves, it just dusts off and leaves it nice and clean. The next step that we want to show you is with the Scotch-Brite. And I like it much better. So if you'll take your time when you apply your primer, be sure that it goes on very smooth without any ripple effect or orange peel in it. If it does that, then you can use the Scotch-Brite and it's much faster to sand off than it is using the sandpaper. If you're using a sandpaper, you're going to eventually, you're going to get some rivets, uh, sand the top off and be sure that you go back and touch them up. With a Scotch-Brite, that just nearly doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and, and uh, do an area now with a Scotch-Brite. You don't have to be near as careful over the rivet heads because it just won't knock it through, knock the tops off of them. So you'll be able to see here in just a minute how much easier it is to sand with a Scotch-Brite as opposed to the sandpaper. We still try to go between the rivets and not so much over the top, but you can, once you get through uh, sanding between them, you can go right over the top and it gets, it really does a nice job. I'll go back over where we did it with the sandpaper because you can't get real close to the rivets with a standard sandpaper without sanding the heads off.
There you can get an idea of what that's supposed to look like when it's sanded. It just doles it right out. There's a little bit around the rivets, but that's, that's really a nice sand job right there. It's very smooth. Scotch-Brite will wear out, so you'll have to change it occasionally, the same as you do sandpaper. When it, when it gets to where you're having to rub uh, harder and it's not taking it off quite as quick, go ahead and change it out because it does make a difference. We're just about through with this wing. We've sanded the other side and we're down to the tip. We've got just a few more minutes of sanding here and then we're going to blow this wing off. Then we're going to take it in the spray room and we're going to wipe it and blow it off and get it ready. We'll wet the spray room floor down. And then we'll go in and we'll get the paint mixed up, get the spray gun checked out, and we'll start uh, putting the top coat on it. We finished sanding the wing, and before we roll it into the spray room, we're going to take a terry towel and an air hose, and we're going to blow it off and wipe it really good to get the, most of the dust that we've sanded off of it out here. We don't want it in the spray room. So we're going to go ahead and wipe it and blow it off. Then we're going to roll it into the paint room, uh, get everything ready, and we'll put the top coat on it. We wet the spray room floor down and we just rolled the wing in and we're getting ready to do the final uh, blowing and wiping it off prior to uh, mixing the paint and painting it. So we used a new uh, terry towel and so we're going to wipe it off now and uh, get ready to start spraying. Okay, we just finished blowing and wiping the wing off. So what we're going to do next is check the spray gun and we're going to make sure that it's ready to go. We want to always do that before we mix our two-part poly. Uh, sometimes you'll mix the paint up and you'll find out that you've got a spray gun issue and with a paint that has a pot life, that's not very good. So we always want to check the spray gun before we mix our two-part paint. We're going to do that right now. And we do that by putting a little bit of water into the hopper. We'll plug it in. We're going to open the fan control valve all the way open. We're going to shut the uh, fluid control valve all the way off. We're going to make sure that the uh, that the uh, the needle and the nozzle is nice and tight. We want to set this to 22 pounds. So we're going to pull the trigger. We're going to turn it down. There's our 22 pounds. Now we're going to check the nozzle fan and make sure we have a nice fan. We're going to open it up three quarters of a turn. That's where we're going to start our first coat of paint. As you can see we have a nice fan. So that's, that's what we need right there. If it weren't even, if it had a, a heavy spot and a light spot or wasn't a perfectly even, then we would have a spray gun problem. So this, this spray gun's ready to go. We've already wet the floor, so we're going to take a little bit of water that's left in it. We're just going to put it on the floor, and we need to dry this nozzle out. We need to pull the trigger and make sure that all that water is out of that spray gun before we put paint in it. Then we want to dry it around the threads of the, uh, of the uh, cup. Make sure that there's no water dripping out of it. Okay, our spray gun's ready to go, so let's go mix paint and we'll start uh, finishing this wing. The wing is ready to paint, so now we're going to come in and mix the paint and get ready to go out and, uh, and paint that wing. So what we want to talk about here is how we're going to mix the paint and what it takes to get it ready. We're going to start out with the Part A, which is our Insignia White. We have the catalyst, the distilled water, the paint mixing paddles, the mixing container, the scales, our paint filters, our respirator, our little calculator, the Tyvek suit, and we have a pen that we're going to write down our, our weights. We're going to be mixing today by weight instead of volume, and it's a way more precise way, and it's much easier and faster means of mixing the Part A, the Catalyst, and the distilled water together. So we're going to start 
by mixing the part A first. We always want to be sure that whenever we mix our paint that we always pre-stir the part A before we mix the catalyst to it. And so we want to do that. We just gently stir it up. And we want to be sure that we don't aerate the paint. So if you use a power mixer or anything on it, be very careful because if you aerate this paint, you want to let it sit for a little while and let the bubbles get out of it. It doesn't, it doesn't like having the air bubbles in it prior to uh, uh, putting the catalyst in it. So the part A is nice and mixed. And so we're going to put the paint filter, the little bit of paint on here is not going to hurt. We're going to put it in the container over here. And we're going to go ahead and start the, the, uh, the container or the, the uh, scale. And we're going to mix 26 ounces of paint. So we need to convert that to grams. And we're going to use 29 grams per ounce as a, as a guideline. That's a, a little bit more than an actual gram. But we're going to use it because it's easy. So on our calculator, we're going to take the 26 ounces times the 29 grams. And that comes up to 754 uh, grams that we're going to mix. So once you get your scale turned on, we need to, uh, we need to zero it out for the container. And we need to get it into units of grams. So we've got it zeroed now. So we're going to go ahead and mix the 750 grams of part A and then we're going to show you how to uh, calculate the part B catalyst and also the water. So we're going to go ahead and pour in about 750 grams. We're going to shoot for that. It doesn't really matter by weight what, what that um, ends up being because we're going to divide that by 3.3 .3, and that's going to give us the amount of catalyst that we need to put in. This can be any number. It really doesn't make any difference. And that's one of the nice things about mixing by weight. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Okay. This is the one measurement that's not critical because everything else will blend into this. This, this ended up at 767 grams of part A. It's very important that you write that down. So we're going to write down 767 grams and we're going to divide that now 767 on our calculator and we're going to divide that by 3.3 .3, and that's the uh, formula that equals the catalyst and that's 234.4 grams. So we're going to put 234 grams. The scale doesn't go to tenths so you round it off to the lowest denominator. In other words instead of going to the 230 um, the 30, 232.4, we're going to go to 232. So we're going to go ahead and put uh, the catalyst in there and we're going to stir that up. And then we'll come back and calculate the water that we're going to put in it. So we're going to zero this back out. We're back, we're still in the grams. So we're going to put in 232 grams of Part B catalyst. You kind of slow down when you get close because it's easy to go over on this. We always want to put in the catalyst first and then the water after it's thoroughly mixed. Okay, it's coming up on 232. There's 28. Okay, there's two, 232 grams, so be sure you keep the lid on the catalyst at all times. It doesn't like to have it, it doesn't like it if it gets moisture in it, it will ruin it. Okay, let's stir this up. It takes a couple minutes to get it to, to go together. When you first start mixing the catalyst and the part A together, it looks a little bit, tiny bit lumpy inside and that will smooth out and as soon as it's nice and smooth be sure that you wipe the edges of the container because we want to be sure that all of that part A and that catalyst is thoroughly mixed together so if you don't scrape it off of those edges you're going to have some paint on there that's not catalyzed so we want to be certain that everything in all the paint in there is really mixed up and scrape it off the bottom and just gently stir it back and forth it's starting to get really nice and smooth and creamy now and that's what we're looking for. This paint, when the catalyst goes into the paint and it's ready to start adding the water, 
it gets real smooth and creamy and, and very shiny. We'll scrape it off that stick and be sure that everything is thoroughly mixed. Okay, that's what we want it to look like. You see in there that it's real smooth and very shiny. Okay, that's that's really well mixed now. So we're going to go ahead and, and put the distilled water in it. So we need to take the exact same part A that we divided by 3.3 for the catalyst and we're going to take the 767 and we're going to divide that by 2.75 and that is the amount of water that we want. Let me do that again. 767 divided by 2.75. Okay. We need 278 grams of water. We'll go ahead and write that down just because we, we don't lose track. If anything goes wrong, we always have that to look back on. So we're going to add 278 grams of water. It's a little bit more water than the catalyst. And that will give us the exact consistency that we need for painting. You don't have to use a viscosity cup. We're going to zero this back out. We're still in the grams. We're going to add 278 grams of water. Be real careful you don't trip your toe. Uh, this paint does not like to be over thin, and if, if you do over thin it, it does not give you as nice a paint job as it does at this consistency. Okay, now we want to just gently stir it up the same as we did with the uh, part B in there. It takes just a minute or two for the water to go in, and once it does, it's going to be a, the exact right viscosity uh, for spray painting. And that will end up about 21 seconds, and that, that's the, the viscosity that we're looking for. If this were being mixed by volume, we would have to use the viscosity cup two or three times because there's no way that we would be able to get the exact amount of water in there. Volume is not close enough to just pour in an exact measure, measurement. Uh, mixing containers for one are not accurate enough. We really prefer the weight measure because it works so well and it gives you time to mix additional paint between the third and the fourth coats. And we will come back at the end of the third coat on this wing that we're going to paint and we will mix up uh, a little bit more. Probably an additional 16 ounces or so will finish that wing for the first coat. Okay, Again we need to scrape those edges really good. Get, get that water really mixed in there. We don't want any thick spots on there. Okay, that's that's nice and mixed up. We're going to put on our Tyvek suit and get our uh, respirator on and we're going to come back and we're going to go paint the wing. Okay, I put my suit on. We're going to give this the last final stirring. Make sure that we got the water totally uh, uh, mixed into the part A and the part B. Usually a couple minutes is all it takes. Okay, we're gonna, we've got more than a, a hopper full, so we're gonna go ahead and put about three-fourths of a hopper, and then if it's worth spraying, if we run out, we'll come back and fill it up. And then after the third coat, we're gonna come back and mix a little bit more paint uh, for the final uh, coat. We've got enough time between the third and the fourth coat to do that. So we're gonna just fill the paint gun up. Now we'll put a little more. We've got a one hour pot life so we've got plenty of time. From this point on right now we should be finished painting this wing in about 45 minutes. 50 minutes is the top so uh, let's see what time we got here. We'll put the lid on here. Okay because it's very important that we, st we start our first uh, from now on we need to pay attention to the time. We've got 10 minutes between coats and uh, we'll talk more about that as we're spraying. So let's go paint away.
be sure to remember now that the time for that 10 minutes between codes start when you pull the trigger on that first code. And so right now, our 10 minutes starts. From the time right now, we'll be putting that second code on in 10 minutes. And I like to uh, start on the bottom of the wing. Uh, you need to pay attention to where you're at. And so uh, by starting on either the top or the bottom every time, then you don't have to worry about where you're at and which code it is. And also, um, when you do the edges like I'm doing here, uh, completely catch the, the furthest point forward and then let it wrap up around the back, particularly on the leading edge, about six or eight inches. And the reason that's important is that when you stand that wing up, then you, uh, you're off the floor a little bit with that uh, uh, pass that blends into that. It's real important that you get a good uh, uh, coat of paint around those edges. That way, when you're all done, you're not going to have a light spot. On this particular wing, we've got some projections that stick out uh, where the aileron's hooked on. And these are not a critical issue on this particular wing because they're fairly large. On some wings that you're going to paint, you're going to have some real small areas that are going to be kind of hard to get to. And if that's the case, you're going to have to change your spray gun uh, to, to, spa to pay special attention to those areas. And uh, sometimes you need to uh, reduce the amount of air, you need to reduce the size of the fan and turn the amount of paint down to where you just barely fog some paint into those areas. And if you do that, you'll end up getting a much better paint job. And you normally only need to do that on the first and second coat and after that you can just go over them and you'll get enough paint to, uh, to make them blend in. One of the most important parts also on a paint job is that when you're making your passes, you need to keep that spray gun the same distance away from the part, you need to keep the speed of the gun the same, and you need to keep the overlap the same. Because what happens if that overlap is too wide and you start having a tiger stripe in there, then you're, you're going to have light and dark spots, particularly as those coats progress. And if, you, uh, if it's bad enough, uh, on that fourth coat, you will have dark and light spots. One other thing that makes for a better paint job is that uh, on the length of the wing, we do it in several sections, and so where those sections come together, in other words, at the end of each pass where you drop down and make a, your overlap and come back, when you make your number three pass, uh, you, you need to change the position that those overlaps, uh, uh, where they meet together. In other words, try not to put them in the same place. So when you start out, instead of going three feet from the end, say, on the third coat, only go two feet and then that will make a, a much nicer paint job. Okay, that's got the bottom of the, uh, the first coat. We're going to lay it down now and go around the edge again and then we'll stand it up and do the top. And that'll be the end of the first coat.
if you find that you cannot paint that entire wing on both sides and around the edges in its entirety in 10 minutes, then what you can do is to paint just one side at a time through all four coats and you can you know wrap the edges up around really good paint all four coats go in clean your gun rotate the wing to the opposite side and immediately remix the paint and do the opposite side in all four coats and by doing that you'll get a very nice paint job if you try to paint more uh, then you can cover in 10 minutes your paint will over tack and you're not going to have a good it's not going to flow out uh, the way it should and you're going to have an orange peel uh, finish that's not real smooth so pay very close attention to that 10 minute gap time between the first second and third coats the fourth coat will have 15 minutes between the third and the fourth coat Okay, that first pass was right at 10 minutes and so we're going to go right ahead and we're going to start uh, the second coat and we just opened the fluid control valve an additional one eighth of a turn and we'll leave the fan in the vertical position to go around the edges.
Okay, we're rotating our nozzle now 90 degrees because this next pass is going to be uh, up and down and so our fan now is going to be um, horizontal instead of in the vertical position and this will be the end of the first cross coat when this, when this uh, uh, coat is completed. When you're making the vertical passes like this, you can see the importance of uh, painting that uh, leading edge uh, back six or eight inches because you're, when you complete that pass going down, it blends in and you're not having to go down so close to the floor. It does two things. It's a lot easier to paint and also if you have any dust, in our case we have a wet uh, floor for dust control, but if you didn't have the floor wet down, and that air going down like that kicks up uh, dust and you get extra uh, lint or whatever in your paint. So that's uh, the main reason for going back on that six or eight inches on that leading edge. We just rotated the nozzle back to the vertical position so we can go around the edges before we go to the top. We're going to show this uh, the painting of this wing in its entirety. In other words, we want to show uh, every step that's involved in painting the wing. So we're not editing anything out of this. We want to show uh, every coat exactly how it's done from uh, the beginning to the end. And so it's very simple for you to paint a wing, particularly when the uh, the Coat applications are very light, and every coat, uh, the amount of paint is turned up by the uh, fluid control knob, and so 
we want uh, we want to show how simple it is to get a very nice paint job with the Stuart uh, finishing system. Okay, we just rotated the uh, the nozzle back to the horizontal position, and so the we'll make the vertical passes up and down, and this will be the end of the uh, first cross coat. If you pay attention to how fast that spray gun is going, you will notice that every pass is exactly the same. That will not change through all four coats. And that's very important that you do that. Okay, we just put some more paint in the hopper, and that was the end of the second coat. We mixed enough paint to do the first three coats. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to open the fluid control valve an additional one eighth of a turn. That should be a one full turn on that uh, control nozzle at this time. And it's been 20 minutes since we first started painting that wing, so we'll pay attention now on this uh, third coat. Between this coat now and the beginning of the fourth coat will be 15 minutes.
Okay, this is where on the third coach you're going to uh, start your laps at uh, less of a distance than that on the first coat. Remember we talked about um, maybe going about three feet on the first coat. On this coat, uh, on the third coat, you can see that we're only going about two feet on that first pass. And so our overlap is in a different position. And uh, that's very important to do that because you always get a little bit different buildup of paint where that gun starts and stops. And so when you do that by changing that uh, location, it just makes, uh, it makes for a nicer paint job. On this spray gun, uh, we'd mentioned earlier that it has a two-stage two uh, trigger. And the first uh, stage of the trigger is for the air, and the second stage is for the fluid. And if you'll, uh, if you'll notice that the air, uh, when we're spraying those passes, that the air never stops. And what we're doing is we're keeping that trigger pulled on the air, and that prevents that spike of pressure. If you let the trigger up, that gauge on that gun will spike up to whatever's coming into it. And this, this spray gun, to get the volume of air, requires about 80 pounds of pressure. So when you pull that trigger and you leave it pulled, what that does is keep your airflow even. At the end of each pass, when that gun starts and stops, that second uh, stage of that trigger that controls the paint is let up. And, and it's, uh, it, it, it just depends on uh, gun control and that's something that you really need to work on because that trigger needs to be started and stopped at the end of each stroke of that spray gun. And on every stroke of that, we're overlapping about two inches. So uh, it's real important that you do that. Otherwise, if you don't let up on it, you're gonna get way too much paint at, that, uh, at the end of each stroke and you good chance that you're gonna get a run if you do that. The third coat should put a very nice finish on uh, on this wing. If it's, uh, if it's properly applied, the first coat will just be a very light tack. The second coat will leave just a little bit of the primer maybe showing through. It'll, it'll have a pretty good color. But at the end of this third coat, it should be uh, the color that you're putting on. In this case, it should be solid white. And uh, by the time you get from one end of the wing to the other, it should be developed, developing a very nice shine. That fourth coat will be the one that really lets it flow out and, uh, and gives a very flat gloss. We mentioned it several times, but it's very important that on every pass that that fluid control knob is turned up an additional eighth of a turn. Your fluid control knob right now on this third coat should be one full turn from the time you started. And if you forget to do that, you're not going to have enough paint on that wing. It'll still look good, but it won't have the, uh, the, the gloss and the, and the real flat, nice shine that, um, that by putting the proper amount of paint on will achieve. An HVLP spray gun, uh, similar to the Devilbus Finish Line 3, 
requires 13 cubic feet of air uh, at that nozzle. And one of the things that's uh, very important is that with a 3 8 airline that we're using to supply this spray gun, it, uh, it, it needs to be uh, supplied to that gun at about 80 PSI. And one of the things that you need to remember is that that control valve on that spray gun is a needle valve. It is not a regulator. And so if you supply that spray gun with unregulated air directly off of a compressor, then what happens is when you set that needle valve at a particular pressure, as that pressure on the spray gun changes, then the amount of air that's going through that needle will also change. And so it's very important that you have a good quality regulator that will maintain a constant pressure at that spray gun. One of the things that we see quite a bit of is that without a good regulator, if that uh, needle valve is set when your compressor, the compressor is shut off, uh, by the time that compressor comes back on and that uh, pressure drops a little bit, if you look down at that spray gun, you'll probably notice that that needle, instead of being 22 pounds, may be down at 18 or 19 pounds. An HVLP spray gun cannot give properly atomized uh, paint at 18 or 19 pounds if they're designed for the 22 or 23 pounds. So it's very important that you have a very good regulator and maintain constant air pressure at that gun at all times. It really doesn't matter uh, if that regulator is mounted right on your air compressor. Normally, they're located just after the inline filter um, at the uh, on the wall. Okay, we're going to go in the mixing room and we're going to mix up some more paint. Uh, we've got five minutes before the beginning of the uh, fourth coat. Okay, we mixed an additional 16 uh, ounces of paint. We just turned the fluid control knob up one quarter a turn additional. going to go around the edges. This will be the final coat. So uh, it's very important now on this coat that you do not slow that spray gun down. You paint it exactly like the first three coats. It's real easy to start slowing that down. And the thing about a waterborne paint of our two-part polyurethane paint is that the shine will develop behind the gun. You do not want that shine to develop uh, immediately as you put that paint on. It should be um, um, a few feet back behind it and it will start to develop uh, uh, fairly quickly as you go from one end of that wing to the other. If you put the paint on to where it's a very wet look right behind the gun, it's too heavy and it is not going to like that. Waterborne paints do not like to go on heavy. It, um, it affects their catalyzation pro uh, um, effect.
putting the two part polyurethane paint on too heavy will affect the cure time and it will actually dull out the finish as it starts to cure. So it's very important that the fourth coat goes on exactly like the first three. This uh, uh, wing should sit in the paint room for about two hours. At that time it will be uh, fairly well tack free and you could uh, move it out into a different part of the shop if you wanted to uh, and paint another wing. The thing that's very nice about this is that within 24 hours you can mask and apply the second uh, color if you wanted an accent stripe or if you wanted a, a, a band around the end or whatever. And you can do that up to 10 days from the time from right now without having to sand or scuff that uh, finish. Now if you wait longer than 10 days for the second color, be sure that after you mask it that you scuff that up uh, for, for really good adhesion of the second coat. You can see that shine really starting to develop behind that spray gun.